Hello guys. Welcome to Diablo the Primordial 2.0. Today's video is about the 5 true dragons in existence. And please check out my second channel anime sum up for the amazing recaps of different anime. So without any further delay, let's start. But before we start please like, subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss the updates. True dragons are the highest ranking beings in existence. They're invulnerable and unstoppable avatars of nature, that serve as the pillars of all creation with only five known to exist. True dragons as spiritual life forms, can assume the appearance and properties of whatever they wish, with no real attachment to their bodies. As spiritual beings, whatever form they assume will be affected by their own personal self-image and individuality. True dragons typically assume a massive lizard-like form covered in scales, and bearing horns and wings, in addition to a secondary human-like form. Their large draconic form is capable of taking and dealing much more damage, while their human form is far more energy efficient, and is better suited for long-term battles. After a true dragon is born for the first time, it can never be truly killed. Even if the individual itself is killed, another true dragon of the same natural characteristic will be born somewhere else. That new true dragon will have the memories of the previous, but might lose some aspects of its personality, while simply understanding its nature of existence right after birth. But, what is a true dragon? And how it came into existence? Before creation, predating concepts such as time and space, there existed only a will. A singular and complete existence with power limited only by its imagination. Inevitably, this will grew bored, very bored. So it came up with the idea of creating other wills to sat its boredom. It took to work, creating a grand construction with space for the wills to occupy, and time, so they could experience events sequentially. After making the groundwork for its construction, it realized that it would know everything that would ever come to pass within it. Finding the idea of knowing everything that would happen before it happens unsatisfying, it decided to give up its omnipotence and omniscience, and what remained afterwards was Star King Dragon Veldanava, a being with the creator's will, but existing as part of creation rather than something beyond it. Veldanava awoke in the place of beginnings and began working to finish the construction of reality. He took command of the eight great holy spirits, powerful and pure elemental forces without wills, and created seven servants to assist him from the great holy spirit of light. Using the power of the great holy spirits, Veldanava began to construct many multitudes of universes, with varying natures and differing laws. At the center of it all was the central world, which Veldanava planned to populate with powerful and immortal spirits bearing flesh, a race of godly men. To facilitate the upbringing of this race of immortal men, Veldanava first created a founding being, that he named Twilight Valentine to serve as the template and ancestor to them. There however, rose a problem. Twilight was a perfect being who lacked any concept of gender, and was incapable of traditional reproduction. To solve this, Twilight used its powerful intellect and created two species based on its own body. The High Humans and the Vampires. The High Humans possessed mortal but lengthy lifespans, and an innate capacity for knowledge and magic. But their massive egos and self-destructive tendencies made them failures. The Vampires had the immortality that Veldanava sought, but their reliance on blood and intolerance to sunlight made them unsuited for populating the Earth. Twilight returned to the drawing board and eventually created humans, and their many subspecies later known as demi-humans. While not being immortal like Veldanava wished, but were enough to satisfy his desires and made him overjoyed. The humans that Twilight created, were spread across the numerous other universes, to ensure variety in the cultures they developed. While Veldanava ordered his first and foremost subordinate Feldway, to eliminate threats to humanity, and ensure they could thrive, thus assigning them the role of Watcher. With an abundance of different races and cultures quickly populating the entire planet, the gears of fate began to be put in motion. Veldanava isolated parts of his divine authority over creation into seven powerful ultimate skills, called the Seven Virtues, and started to divvy them up to those he considered worthy, passing the rest into the cycle of reincarnation, to choose their own masters, while leaving only Michael for himself. He met Ramirez and Guy, whose powers had already started to reach a level, that could potentially stand against his. He assigned them special positions called administrators, so they have the authority to speak on his behalf, and left the planet and humanity in their care. At some point, he came into contact with the royalty of the Nazca Kingdom. He takes their crown prince Rudra as his disciple, and trains him to be a hero who could stand equal with the demon Lord Guy. He even gave him Michael, so he could better fulfill his dream of a unified world. Eventually, 
Veldanava and Rudra's sister Lucia fell in love, and consummated their relationship, conceiving Milam Nava in the process. The creation of Milam, resulted in most of Veldanava's energy being taken away and his body destabilizing. Veldanava used the last of his old body's power to create a sibling for Milam, a baby dragon, that would serve as her companion, so that she never had to be lonely as he had. With almost all of his energy drained, Veldanava's subsequent reincarnation was rather weak. His new body, for all anybody could tell, was essentially human. It didn't possess the near invulnerability his previous draconic body did, and it would even eventually die of old age, bearing a mortal lifespan. Veldanava, having left all of his responsibilities to others, was free to enjoy a simple life with his wife and children, no longer bored or lonely with them at his side. However, during one of Rudra's trips to the north to fight Guy, a group of fighters from a rival nation assaulted the capital of Nazca. Both Veldanava and his wife Lucia perished in the resulting terrorist attack, leaving Milam and the baby dragon orphaned, and Rudra in a deep depression. Of course, as a true dragon, no matter how much of his power he lost, or how much damage he took, he could always resurrect at full power whenever he wished. But even after so many centuries, he never reincarnated. Second is Velzard, also known as the White Ice Dragon. She has pure white skin with cold and bewitching blue diamond-colored eyes. She is the second oldest of the four true dragons, and is the partner of Guy Crimson. Uninterested in most worldly matters, Velzard usually spends her time in the Palace of White Ice, releasing her aura that keeps the ice continent frozen. She is considered the strongest true dragon in terms of power and defensive capability, and has the greatest magicule store after Veldanava and Veldora. In the past, she was stated to get into frequent arguments with her younger sister Velgrind, due to deeming her soft, when dealing with their youngest brother Veldora. She was stated to be one, who harshly and painfully disciplines and punishes Veldora, when his destructive impulses begun taking over him and he causes mass destruction. When Veldanava was alive, she became jealous of the attention he gave Guy Crimson, and him entrusting Guy with serious jobs and responsibilities. Showing her close relationship with Veldanava and her desire to have his sole attention. Third is Velgrind, also known as the Scorch Dragon. Velgrind has azure blue hair kept in twin buns and deep golden eyes. She is the third oldest of the five true dragons, and is the partner of Rudra. Fitting to her title and attribute, Velgrind is a hot-headed individual. She doesn't like complex schemes and would act out of emotions at times. The most defining trait of Velgrind is her undying devotion towards Rudra. She will do anything and everything as long as Rudra desires it, and will fly into rage instantly if anyone dares to insult Rudra in any ways. She is largely disinterested in other matters, and only values things that Rudra would value. Velgrind is very caring towards Veldora, but also very strict against him. She does not approve Velzard's Spartan methods of education, and Velgrind is the one who spoils and indulges Veldora the most. Velgrind has a rivalry with her older sister Velzard, due to Rudra competing against Guy in their game. Velgrind is directly opposing her elder sister, in order to help Rudra defeat Guy. Fourth is Veldora, also known as the Storm Dragon. Veldora's human form has blonde hair, and is two meters tall. He is the fourth oldest of the five true dragons, and is the partner of Rimuru Tempest. Veldora is generally boisterous, excitable, but also fairly easygoing. Despite his reputation as someone who just wants to rampage, Veldora is only dangerous if he doesn't get to unwind once in a while, or if his loved ones are threatened. He is also quite energetic, prideful, and has no reservation in showing off his strength. Veldora is rather shy and socially awkward but hides it behind boasts of how great he is. His time spent in Rimuru's stomach with Ifrit, and his time spent living in Tempest, resulted in Veldora developing a somewhat more patient, and less impulsive personality. Despite his nonchalant personality, he greatly appreciates Rimuru as his sworn friend and trusts him. Veldora is not good at confronting his sisters, believing they viewed him as their plaything, tormenting him and causing deep emotional trauma. He seems to hold high respect for his older brother Veldanava, who shielded him from his sisters. And last is Rimuru Tempest, known as the Chaos Creator Rimuru. He is the partner and best friend of the true dragon Veldora Tempest. Rimuru is the founder and king of the monster country Tempest of the Jura Forest. He has a kind heart and a quirky personality. Even though he is quite laid back and wants to avoid troublesome situations as much as possible, he actually works very diligently when there is a task needed to be taken care of. 
He is regarded as one of the strongest demon lords, among the mighty eight-star demon lords. He is described as cautious and cunning by other fellow demon lords, unaware that it is simply a means of him trying to prevent troublesome situations from going out of hand. As he progresses through the story, he slowly becomes more and more like an actual demon lord. And as he adjusts to the rules of the new world, and understands the capabilities of his subordinates, he begins to let them handle tough situations on their own. During the events of Abyss Unleashed, Rimuru's latent potential and power as the fifth true dragon is fully realized. This results in his reincarnation into a fully draconic body with similar physical properties to a slime called Ultimate Slime. And that's it. Thank you for watching. And if you guys have not watched my other videos, then please watch them. And don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon, so you don't miss the updates.